Hello guys, welcome to our class for today. This is Noble Mind Science Tutorials Online and this is your physics video tutorial. Um, I hope you are all fine and that you are doing very great and I also hope that you are enjoying our lectures. So if you are enjoying our lectures, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the subscribe button also click on the description bell so that when we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. That okay, so um, I remain on top of my care and you, whatever you want to reach us, you can reach us through the WhatsApp number that is showing right on your screen. And for our class for today, we'll be looking at fluid at rest. Fluid at rest. So we'll be discussing um, briefly on surface tension. Uh, we'll look at application of surface tension and then um, briefly on the molecular explanation of surface tension. We we'll also discuss capillarity, viscosity, terminal velocity, and we'll look at the difference between difference and similarities between viscosity and friction. So please, I hope you have your writing materials ready so that we can go straight to our class for today. So if you are ready, let us go straight to our class for today. Okay, so as I've said, today we'll be looking at surface tension and um, it's um, an experience that we've always, we all may have gotten, especially if we observe a um, water droplet from a tap. You know, if you observe water droplet from a tap, when you have closed the tap, you will observe that the liquid behaves as if it is like a stretch skin you know so the drop of water from the tap we appear to behave like a, an elastic uh, skin it will have to behave like an elastic elastic, elastic skin or a bag so the bag is what supports the weight of the water before it falls so if you look at the water that is dropping from a tap especially when the tap has stopped running you see that the water we the drop of water will tarry for a while before it will not drop off right so this is one experience of surface tension and besides that if you want a needle to float on water you can actually achieve it so what you do is that you place the needle carefully on a small piece of paper and then drop the needle and the paper on top of water gently just drop it gently on top of the water when the paper soaks and when the paper soaks and sink the needle or razor blade will be observed to float on the surface of the water okay so that observation tells you that the water surface has tension or it is stretched it's like an elastic skin okay the weight of the needle or is blade acting downward is supported by some forces acting upward now these forces are as upward and the as downwards and upwards they tend to make the surface of the water to have to be stretched or to be like under tension right and because the surface of the water is under tension um little or light objects like razor blade or needle can float on top of water now another experience that you can also get is that if you go close to some pool of water if you go close to stagnant pool of water you observe that there are some insects that walk on top of the water yeah i've observed it severally um, because of the area where i grew up and all that you will see some insects they walk on top of the water what is giving the ability to walk on top of the water is because the top of the water appears to be stretched and because of that and because these insects they are very light they are light with they can actually walk on it on top of the water uh, with ease because there is a tension on the surface of the water so 
this is what this is just some experiences or observations that tells you that yes when the water body is undisturbed the surface of the water is under tension that's okay there is a, a tension on the surface of the water so what is surface tension surface tension is a force acting along the surface of a liquid causing the liquid surface to behave like a stretch elastic skin so that is exactly what we have discussed um, uh, that's just what we have discussed initially that the surface of the water behave like an elastic skin and because of this a piece of needle or a reservoir blade can actually float on top of the water some insects can actually um, walk freely or easily walk with ease on the surface of water is that okay so these are just some observations or uh, experiences that shows that yes water surface is under tension okay so what is the molecular explanation of surface tension okay so this is the molecular explanation of surface tension surface tension is considered to be due to forces of attraction between the molecules of the liquids now if you look at this diagram you see that the molecules of the liquids they are under tension okay, so i use this to represent molecules of liquid and then these are the molecules that are close to the surface these are the molecules that are inside the liquid is that okay so the molecules of a liquid are attracted by one another equally in every direction and that is exactly what you're seeing here this should this because they are attracted to one another in every direction it means that the resultant force on the molecule of the liquid inside this um, inside this container is equals to zero but the molecules that are, that are under the surface of the liquid or the molecules that are close to the surface of the liquid it has many molecules pulling it from below but very few pulling it upwards so if you look at these two molecules that are close to the surface you see there are more molecules that are pulling it down than the ones that are trying to pull these molecules down so such molecule experiences a resonant force acting downwards because all molecules in the surface of the liquid experiences this resultant downward pull the liquid surface will always tend to shrink the surface of the liquid is therefore in a state of strain or tension which is called surface tension all right so this is the molecular explanation of surface tension what that simply just tells you is that the surface or the molecules in the liquid are always under tension and the molecules that are close to the surface of the liquid they are more they are pulled down there are more molecules that are pulling them i mean there are there's more force that is pulling the molecules that are close to the surface down than force that are pulling them upward and because of that the surface of this liquid tends to shrink and it's under tension and that is why you have the experience of surface tension is that okay so that is the explanation for um, surface tension using the molecular theory so we're going to look at the application of surface tension and in our everyday life right okay so what are some of the application of uh, surface tension you know that uh, if you look at some materials you see that they have uh, a surface that is like a waterproof that water does not easily penetrate through so like materials used for umbrella recalls tents all of them they are usually treated with oil based substances which prevent water from wetting them so this is also this one application of surface tension the cleaning action of soaps and detergents okay so surface tension prevents oily or dirty clothes from being washed easily soaps and detergents reduces or weakens surface tension and does make it easy to wash the clothes also heat reduces surface tension of water hence washing is easier with hot water I, i'm sure these are experiences i would normally um have in our daily activities if you want to wash clothes you need very good soap or detergent to weaken surface tension so that the dirt can easily leave 
the cloth and also heat reduces surface tension so if you want your clothes to be very clean or to be easy to wash if you use hot water you find it to be easier for you to wash some very very dirty clothes some very very dirty clothes so how can you now reduce surface tension one just as we have discussed up here surface tension can be reduced one by addition of detergent addition of alcohol addition of camphor boiling of water and addition of kerosene so in the case of maybe your paper floating in the in water or your needle floating in water if you want the needle to sink just add small kerosene to that water the needle will sink because the needle will break i mean the kerosene will break the the bond of the water molecules and before you know the needle will just sink or you, i just add detergent or alcohol or camphor all these um, substances reduces uh, surface tension so that's okay so that is all about surface tension so now we're going to look at capillarity what is capillarity you know sometimes when you pour um if water is in a bowl and you have a narrow tube you have a tube with a narrow bowl if you put if you dip that tube inside the water you find out that the water will rise on the tube okay the water will rise on the narrow tube why is that water rising on the narrow tube it is due to capillarity it is due to capillarity is that okay and it it is also this uh, capillary action that enables us you know sometimes in in our own site sometimes you want to transfer um a liquid from one container to the other using um, a hose so it is capillary actions that make it easy for you to do that transfer okay so capillarity is the tendency of a liquid to rise or fall in a narrow tube so you can do that simple experiment i will see exactly what i what i'm saying there water will rise in a narrow tube depending on the bore of the tube the bore of the tube is the width of the tube right the width or the diameter of the tube that is the bore of the tube so depending on the bore of the tube the narrower the bore the higher the water will rise in the tube also so solution will rise but not to the same level like in water so this is what capillary is all about or capillarity is all about the tendency of a liquid to rise or fall in a narrow tube okay then for like mercury mercury level will not rise in a tube it will rather fall it will rather fall so in both water and soap solution the surface of the liquid or its many cores curves upward while in mercury the many cores is curved downwards so if you look at water that is in a tube you find out that in the surface there's a curve there's a curve that is upward that curve is called meniscus that curve is called meniscus and for soap and water the curve is upward while in the case of mercury it is downward okay so why do these different liquids behave the way they behave why is it that um, water molecules will rise in a tube while that of mercury they will fall in a narrow tube it is because of a phenomenon that is called cohesion and adhesion it is because of these two phenomena called cohesion and adhesion so what is cohesion cohesion is a force of attraction between molecules of the same liquid all right so uh, if you have uh, like the force of attraction between water molecules the force of attraction between a uh, mercury molecule is called cohesion while addition is force of attraction between molecules of different uh, substances so if you have the force of attraction between water and glass or between mercury and glass is known as adhesive force it's known as adhesive force okay so these two phenomena you can actually demonstrate them 
you can demonstrate them by um, pouring these liquids on a glass surface okay so if you pour water on a glass surface you will observe that the water will spread on the glass surface or there's a statement that they say water with glass why does water with glass water will wet glass like because the force of addition between the glass molecules and the water molecules is stronger than the force of cohesion between the water molecules okay so the force of addition between the glass and water is stronger than the cohesion between water molecules and that is why water will wet glass take note of these statements because these are examination questions this is a typical examination question because you can be asked why does water wet glass it is because water wet glass because the force of addition between the glass and water molecule is stronger than the force of question between the water molecules that is just a simple answer and this is why you see that um, the many course the many course of water in a glass tube is curved up upward that's why the many course will curve upward now in the case of mercury mercury does not wear glass so this is a typical examinative question why is it that mercury does not wear glass so mercury does not wear glass because the cohesive force between the molecules of mercury is stronger than the adhesive force between the mercury and the glass so that is why mole molecules of mercury will cling to themselves and that is why when you pour mercury on a glass you will find that the mercury will form droplets yeah mercury will form droplets it will not wear the glass it will just form droplets okay so the mercury will form droplets when you pour it on a glass all right so and that is why the many scores of mercury in a glass tube will curve downward so other areas where you experience capillarity is blotting paper that absorb ink so if you put a blotting paper in an ink it will absorb you that is capillarity water rises in the stem of a plant yes the plant the leaves of a plant receives water from the root by the action of capillarity okay the leaves of a plant they get water from the root of the plant by capillarity or capillary action also another experience that we have is that of the candle wax that rises up in the week or if you are if you have used a, a kerosene lamp before it is by capillary that the kerosene will rise through the week upwards that's okay so these are some experiences that you have and all these experiences demonstrate uh, capillarity okay so i hope that one is clear so we'll now look at viscosity very quickly viscosity simply is um, friction in fluids you know in our previous topic we'll discuss uh, solid friction so viscosity is fluid friction viscosity is fluid friction so if you look at um, when you are pouring water from a container and when you pour oil from a container which of them will flow faster it is water right it is water so water flowed faster when poured than oil okay also if you drop a stone in water the stone will get to the bottom of the of the container faster than when you drop it inside oil so these two observations is because of frictional force in the liquids or in water and in oil okay so viscosity viscosity is known as friction in fluids or friction in uh, liquids as the case may be okay so viscosity is internal friction between layers of a liquid or gas in motion liquids which which pour easily are said to be less viscous why those are pour slowly are said to be more viscous e.g oil and water oil is more viscous than water okay so based on this um, 
uh, discussions or experience that you've had, you will see that oil is actually more viscous than water. And even if you rub oil and water on your palm, you will see that the oil is slimy while the water is just, in fact, the water will just, within a short time, it will dry off from your hand, but the oil will still remain. Okay, and so that is because of the viscosity of the oil. Okay, so what are some of effects of viscosity? One, viscosity is responsible for the different rate of flow of fluids. And that is exactly what we said before, that a more viscous fluid will flow slower than a less viscous fluid. It also affects motion of bodies in fluids. That is exactly what we also said, that if you drop a stone in water and in oil, the one in water will, will get to the bottom of the water faster than the one you drop inside the, uh, a viscous liquid or oil. Is that okay? These are experiences that we get on a daily basis. So what are some of the applications of um, viscosity? One, viscous liquids are used as lubricants. This is clear. You cannot use water to lubricate anything, but you can use oil. So viscous liquids are used as uh, lubricants. Viscosity decreases with temperature rise, hence reduction in lubricating effect of lubricant. So when a lubricant is heated, the viscosity is reduced. So that is why when engine oil are manufactured, they put all these factors, all these factors of effect of temperature and all that, they are factored into the production of engine oil so that you can have quality engine oil that will lubricate your engine parts no matter how high the temperature of the engine is. So because temperature reduces the viscosity of uh, a lubricating uh, substance, and once the viscosity is reduced, it can affect the engine parts. It can affect the engine part, can lead to wear and tear and all that of the engine part. So a good viscous liquid is needed to lubricate engine parts. So these are some of the applications of uh, viscosity. Okay. So we'll look at terminal velocity now. Okay, terminal velocity can be explained by this simple uh, observation, right? So when a stone falls through a viscous liquid, right, it is subject to the effect of three forces. One, the weight of the stone that is acting downward, the upthrust on the stone, right and then the viscous force that is opposing its motion so this is the up thrust this is the viscous force and then this is the width of the stone now the viscous force as opposite to the motion of the stone the viscous force increases with the speed of the stone as the stone speed is increasing the viscous force will also increase then at maximum speed, as the stone is coming down, at maximum speed, the viscous drag, the viscous drag balances the downward force or the downward force of the weight of the stone. So the point, at this point, the stone moves with constant velocity. So at the, the point at which the stone will begin to move with constant velocity is known as terminal velocity. It is known as terminal velocity. So these are um, experiences that we need to take note of. And mathematically stated, um, terminal velocity is equals to uh, V is equals to the width minus of trust. Weight minus of trust. So, you just need to take note of this and put this down in your notes. All right. So we'll look at uh, we'll look at the difference and similarities between viscosity and the uh, friction. Okay. So we said that uh, viscosity is friction in fluid, and then uh, solid friction is friction in. Uh, in, in, in solids, right? So similarities are both forces oppose relative motion between surfaces, and that is we've already discussed everything about friction before and on that. Both depend on the nature of the materials in contact. So these are their similarities. And what are their differences? Friction does not depend on area of surface in contact. Viscosity depends on the area of surface in contact. 
So these are some of their differences. Viscosity depends on the area of contact. Friction depends on normal reaction. Viscosity does not depend on normal reaction. Friction occurs in solid. Viscosity occurs in liquids and gases. We've discussed that before. Friction does not depend on the relative velocities between two layers. We just talk about uh, terminal velocity now. So viscosity depends on the relative velocity between layers. Okay. So these are some of the similarities between um, viscosity and uh, solid uh, friction. Okay, guys. So this is where we are stopping in this uh, class for today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, but before I go, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the not notification bell so that when we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. Thank you so much for your time. You can reach us via the WhatsApp channel that is showing on your screen. And if you have any challenge in physics, you can also reach us through the WhatsApp number. You can place it there, right? Put your number there, I mean, put your question there, and then we'll resolve it together. Is that okay? Because our aim and objective is to make you understand, make physics to be simple for you, and then make you to understand the subject better. So we are trying to improve your learning in physics and try to make the subject to be as simple as possible to you. So please reach out to us and we'll work together to make you a better you. So thank you so much, and I hope to see you in our next class. Thanks.